I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today is a very, very, very special guest. Two guests today. Today, it's, it, th- these are my favorite kind of podcasts because today we have director Ryan Rundle of the documentary film Afterlife, and we have two-time Olympian and all-around great swole push-up man, Mike Alexandrov. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for having us, Mel. A lot of people are just on, on the download, buddy. They don't watch the video. Most people consume this media on the download, so they're not going to see the arm waving. So that was all useless. <laughs> like I, I, I didn't know what was going on in terms, of, in terms of the documentary. I'd heard a little bit about it through friends, and, and then I was, I was really glad that you reached out to me and said, hey, buddy, this is coming down the pike. Um, there's something that's happening right now in terms of the documentary film which is based on you, uh, Afterlife, and it's, it's, it's a, you, you're, you're entering film festivals. Tell me about the film festival circuit and what's on tap soon. So at, at this time, um, Afterlife is screening online at the Newport Beach Film Festival. And on Friday, um, October 9th through the 17th, um, it will be streaming online at uh, the Hot Springs Documentary Film Festival. In in terms of the film, the festival market, I, I have a little bit of experience in entertainment. I understand that submitting and going through that process is a bit, you know, it's it's it's, it's a nail biter because you you pour your heart and soul into this. Um, is that yeah. been your life? Is that has that been is that been more work than actually making the film? Um. I mean, this was a, a real labor of love for, you know, not only myself, but uh, my cinematographer, Alex Polini, um, who co-produced the film with me. I mean, we spent about two years um, shooting on and off with Mike um, and just kind of learning about him. And um, in the process, you know, something that's really special about documentary filmmaking is I feel like you get you know, close to your, your subjects. And I feel like we've kind of bonded and become friends in the process, which is really, really cool. We're going to swim nerd this up and we're going to bring Mike in, but this is an intro to folks who just might know, not know, uh, Michael Alexandrov, two-time Olympian. He swam for Bulgaria uh, in 2004, 2008, and then became a U.S. citizen, represented the USA national team at Duel in the Pool, uh, and you were you made the world championship team in 2010. It's uh, but a lot of folks, you know, our, our fan, a lot of our fan base came to know and love you from your time at Northwestern, swimming with Mac Reavers, right? Uh, yeah. Winning NC two A's in the hundred breast fifty was it fifty? I wrote it down fifty one fifty six. Is that what you went? Yeah, back in 2007. Yeah, it's a. Uh, that that's that, when I, I I wasn't in swimming for a while and I came back my 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 first dose of I love this sport again was you and that crew and um, so oh, wow. you kindled my love for the sport so I'm that's why I'm kind of happy to have you on today yeah uh, thank you oh, that is so cool it. yeah thank those you. were those were some special times for me I mean I <laughs> I, I remember that uh, record Jeremy Lin set in '97. And I was just in awe. I was 12 years old at the time, and I was just, I was like, I can't believe people can actually swim this fast breaststroke. And then 10 years later, you know, as you as you just said, you know, we, we made it happen, not only for me individually, but we took that relay, that 400 medley relay, set the record um, in, the, in um, that final day of NCAAs. And, and it was just, yeah, it brings back a lot of good memories, so. But I want to talk a little bit about you before we get back to the documentary and uh, in, in terms of just your, your, your roots and swim. Uh, by the way, I spent, I, I was actually, oddly enough, a friend of mine had his directorial debut for a sci-fi channel movie and I wrote that movie. 
And wow. I spent an entire winter in Sofia, Bulgaria. Really? That's amazing. Yes. I didn't know that. <laughs> and, and, and it was a, with him, and it was gorgeous. A lot of people that don't know the area, it, it's a lot of, a lot of company, a lot of uh, production companies, studios will shoot Bulgaria or shoot Romania and shoot it for uh, the East Coast, North Carolina, the North Carolina, the Appalachian Mountain area. But it's a really gorgeous place. Loved it. Loved the yogurt. Loved the cheese. Ate a lot of bread. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, if, if I remember correctly, wasn't your father a great swimmer? Yeah. So he swam for Bulgaria. He was the breaststroke record holder there. And he swam in, at Moscow in 80. So. So you swam at the 1980 Olympic Games, and that's I, I remember early on in talking to you and 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 just you know telling your story. The question always was: Did you did you feel pressure from your father because of he ascended to the Olympic stage? Did you feel pressure from him to do the same thing? And I forgot your answer. I think I asked yeah. you that ten years ago. Yeah, um, I wouldn't say pressure. I would say inspiration. Um, I just that was my dream. My dream was to go to the Olympics, just like my dad. Um, and he did it with me. I mean, he, he would come to swim practices with me when I was younger and he would whoop me around and, uh, that, that motivated me. And uh, the first time I was able to actually beat my dad, YMCA nationals in, I was 16, almost 17 years old. And I mean, he was so proud of me. I mean, there was no pressure. He just, you know, and he was, the way he did it was just amazing. I mean, when I look back on it, he he never like pushed me like to the extreme. It was just like, Hey, we're going to do this. You've got this talent. We're going to keep growing it. And this is what's on the table. And honestly, nothing else was really on the table. So, I mean, I was just fortunate to have someone as a role model who was living at home, but well, (laughs) obviously uh, just kind of shoving me, shoving me along <laughs> and, and leading the way. Like, you know, I was, he, he, we were going to practice together and, you know, he, he had me when he was 24. So, you know, when I was 12, he was in his like late thirties. So it was, you know, and he was still going strong at the time. Let's unpack that for a second. If, if I heard you correctly, you couldn't beat your dad until you were 16. Is that correct? That is very correct. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, he, he swam at YMCA Nationals with me. And after that, that time, they made the rule that you couldn't be 18 and over, or you couldn't be over 18 and compete at YMCA Nationals. But before that, they never had the rule. So here's all these, like, high schoolers, 18 and unders, and then my dad, who's 37. And, 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 and just, he went 57, oh, and, he, you know, he was top eight. I think he got second uh, that year. And uh, – Next year, I was finally able to beat him. Next year, I was yeah, almost seventeen oh, years old. This, this is this is a nugget. Of, this is like a, this is a swimming history nugget that we all need to revel in. Uh, <laughs> so your dad. So first, I went to Y Nationals. This first time I shaved my head. First time I won a national championship. I'm a, I'm a Y National child. So not right. everybody has that experience in swim. But you know, for people who don't who don't, they they still understand that Y Nationals is like a very special thing. Your dad was the reason why I didn't know that you could swim over 18. So your dad's the reason why the YMCA changed the rules. They changed the rule after that year. They, they didn't want this 37. Anybody over there. Like, <laughs> he's like, these kids are getting whooped by this 37. <laughs> whoa, whoa, so wait a minute. I, I remember I, all these whoa. stories. Full disclosure, I have not seen the documentary. Cause shame on Ryan. I didn't get a screener before we got this podcast, but we, we all, we, we, we were trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to get this media role in before, before the festivals all happen. And, um, but is, did, Brian, did you cover yeah. this swimming nugget of history uh, the, with, with dad and wine Ashles? Is this in the documentary? You know, we probably spent um, close to eight hours over the course of those two years interviewing Mike. Um, and like I mentioned before, all of these, these stories I'm familiar, I'm very familiar with because I listened to them over and over and over um, in the recordings. Um, but this, I don't believe we, we included in the documentary, but it's in there. It's in there. Us competing at YMCA nationals is in there, but it's not, you know, 
included directly. Sure, sure. But there's a there's a, a couple of shots that you'll see. It's at in Fort Lauderdale at that pool with my dad compete after the ceremonies, and we both have our national team gear on. Oh, so, is that what that archival footage is? From? That is definitely. Oh, yeah. okay, cool, cool. We got a lot of great archival footage from Plum and his father, um, and some of it is is really really remarkable just like very full of energy and emotion and one of my favorites was actually you mentioned the race in 2007 and that was my favorite story to i mean we probably asked you about that on two or three different occasions and every time mike would talk about it, his face would just light up and you could you could feel the energy you could feel that feeling and that was always so exciting for me <laughs> You know, swimming is, is, uh, it's kind of like a religion. I, I, that's, that upsets people sometimes when I say it, but it's that sports are, and, and for most people around the world, we spend so much time, we're so dedicated to it. It is a, it has a spiritual through line and thread that just infects us. Especially um, when you spend your whole life doing it, your whole childhood. I mean, it seems like 24 seven, you guys are, you guys are like Spartan warriors, you know? It, it's a, uh, Mike's had a long career, long pro yeah. career. He's, he's always been in the hunt. Um, so when you, when, when, you know, how, how did the documentary film Afterlife come about? Because you captured for two years. What is it, you know, what, tell me the genesis. When, when, when were you sitting on the couch and we're like, we're doing this? I'm, I'm like, I thought about it. It's happening. You know, it was actually after Mike and I got together for, I think, coffee or tea at one point. Um, my first time meeting him and he just told me a little bit about his his story and where he came from and what he was doing and at the time he was just really on a mission to uh, get on the Olympic team for Tokyo in 2020 um, and I just thought it was really remarkable to be essentially you know, aging out of something that you've done your whole life and still want to push for more. And I wanted to, to understand why and, um, you know, why he felt so compelled to do this thing. And it took me, it took me a couple of years to, to really grasp it. I feel like, like it took that long for me to fully understand where this person was coming from. And it was just a really, uh, remarkable journey for for me and my my cinematographer and cinematographers and directors love the medium of water oh yeah i mean alex had a, a blast with that um i'm actually i'm really excited to to send you the screen now and i'm kind of bummed that i didn't beforehand I could, yeah, I could, you know, I could, have, I could have stopped my Netflix or HBO Max and just, and just, you know, and had this exclusive moment with my spouse. Opportunity missed. But since, <laughs> I do want to see it. Uh, and I, you know, the interesting thing is that this, I think this is uh, the swimming community steps up and I, and they 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 do consume this media because it's so rare that we that we get a film with, with, with great production value that, that tells uh, stories in, in this long form format. So uh, how long is the film? The film, ironically, is about 12 minutes. Um, but one of the hardest things for me in the editing room was deciding what to, to lose, you know, like what we could live without. Because I feel like, honestly, we could have made a, a feature out of this story. It's a, um, so you, you need, you need at least six hours. Cause I know this guy, I know him personally. And, uh, I, yeah. we could have made the apocalypse now redux of swimming movies. <laughs> but it, it's that. So you're, you're, you're curated, you're 12 minutes. And so we have a tight, very tight narrative. Um, if, if I had to ask you what, what is the, you know, what is the takeaway? you know, as a, as a filmmaker, you, you're really, you're telling a story. You, you, you come with a mission. I'm going to say okay. this. I, I, I know this about the story. I need to earn it and achieve it and tell this story. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're hoping that, that that iteration of what that story is has different meanings for different people because they're going to personalize sure. it. What was that message that you wanted 
uh, to, to earn and convey about Michael? Hmm. I think what struck me originally about Mike's story and then even more so when we finished the documentary was its universal nature. Um, I feel like it's a very, very human story. Um, it's a conflict that all of us at some point or another will encounter in our lifetime. Um, Mike and other professional athletes just encountered it sooner. So I feel like swimming um, is really just the context, but it's actually in fact a, a universal story that anyone anywhere can relate to. And I thought that was what was really beautiful about, about the way he expressed himself. And honestly, it took a lot of courage for him to, to go there. And I really, really admire that. So thank you, Ryan. Yeah, I think it, it really portrays the, when I watch it, um, Ryan, you did a really good job of portraying the human condition, that, that kind of that conflict between the, the rising of, of the athlete or the career in a sense, and then coming to terms with the inevitability of that one day not being the case. Yeah. And it's something I don't think everybody thinks about when they consider sport. Um, it's like this niche moment in an athlete's life um, where you kind of got to come to terms with hanging it up. And that's, really, really difficult when you've been doing something for 30 years, you know? And, and, and um, in all sports, but we can make it, we, we have a swim audience. So let's, let's look at it through the, the swim nerd and sure. family lens. Uh, you know, there's a few milestones and those milestones for, for everybody is they want to swim in college. So they commit and then they, they reach that, right. that, that moment where they're going to swim in college on a college yeah. team. And in a sense, that's everybody's Olympic gold medal. That's and it's a big moment. It's a huge moment yeah. for the dad, the coach. And then you have, you know, whatever that career is in college, and maybe it becomes elite and you're a pro like like Mike post college for a long time. And then that, that final chapter is that none it's like it's like death. We don't think about death. Yeah. Is, the end is death. And the question is It's hard to talk about, you know. Are you gonna experience death with grace? Or are you, uh, you know, how are you going to, how are you going to handle that? Because it, it is a death and it sounds like afterlife. Uh, I like I like the title of the, of, of the <laughs> I like afterlife. Thank you. So what, so having said all that, what is, what does afterlife mean? How did you arrive at afterlife? The title of the film. Um, I think it just, you know, came to us in the editing room and it just seemed fitting you know, like, where do you, where do you go from, from there? Like, where do you go after your career has, has concluded, you know? Um, because it's, it's difficult because you're retiring really at the prime of your, your life, you know, um, you're roughly 30 years old or so in a lot of cases and you have the whole rest of your life ahead of you. And now the question I feel like is, what do you do with all that now that you've poured all of this time and energy into this thing and you are that thing that is your identity who are you now mike who yes. are you yeah <laughs> yeah who am i i don't know what am I? <laughs> yeah no that's true it's uh the way that you know you think all of these experiences through the sport and all these moments and all the training, you know, prepare you for the rest of your life. And in a sense they do, you build a, a sense of resilience, um, but it's a compartmentalized part of your life and it can apply for sure to the rest of your life and that all of the, all, all of the fundamentals that I've developed from the swimming world. Um, but still, the, as you age, as you progress, it still doesn't prepare you for the rest of that life. The rest of, of, of your life, in a sense, you're, you're not fully like, okay, I'm set, here I go, now this is it. It's still an unknown, just like every day of our life is an unknown. And um, 
you know, what we do yesterday definitely prepares us for today, but it's not, you know, 100%. So that it captures that as well, that part of the story, which I think is, is really cool. Where does, um, you know, I don't want to give it away. I want, I want people to, to watch the film, but, uh, so if, if I start moving in a direction of giving anything, you know, anything away, you can say, Mel, stop. But uh, just, just catch us up now. Where are you at now? Where are you at personally? Where are you at? I, I, I know that you're fanatical about your fitness, and I felt like you would always swim for the rest of your life no matter what. What's going on with you? Yes, that's right. I am still swimming um, as, as just you know, for exercise. Uh, I'm fortunate to have, you know, a, a 25 yard pool. And uh, so I get my friends over, we do a couple, you know, swim sessions a week. Uh, you know, sometimes we get up early and relive the, relive the early morning practices and we call it, you know, shredding for the wedding season, you know, things like that. Um, so, you know, it's still, still really fun to relive those, uh, those moments with, with friends or even personally in the water. Um, but now in physical therapy school, so, um, you know, as we've had some interviews before where I was doing personal training and some swim coaching, and now I'm kind of trying to, you know, grow my education a little bit, a little bit further there. And, um, so that's, that's, that's in the making right now. Um, and then, yeah, I do a lot of swim coaching. So I work one-on-one -on -one with a lot of swimmers. Um, and that's still a, a big passion of mine. I've been doing that since I was a sophomore in college. So you know, the, just just teaching swimmers of all levels. Some adults come and don't know how to swim, and then I've got you know some some very um, high level high schoolers that that are that are gearing up for for hopefully college for for hopefully that um, that part of their their career. So it's I have a lot of fun with that. So that's that's what's happening right now. There's a lot of people who, who, who hold the opinion that swimming should be a cradle to the grave sport and that it's something that you can drop back in on. So the big question is, buddy, are we going to see you breaking master's world records soon? Or is that like you're, you're going to push that out 10 years or maybe wait until you're in your 50s to start doing that? Where, where's your head there? Um, that's a great question. That's a, right now, I just take it day by day, week by week. Um, I know some of those masters records and some of those master swimmers when I've gone to these masters meets are, uh, are pretty hardcore. They're, they're in it. They're in it. Like they're back in college, you know, winter training. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to stay, you know, with, with the sport, what it gave me was that ability to, um, to flush out to ability to stay mentally clear, uh, to be in the water, to release, uh, here in Southern California in the sun. That's part of the reason why I actually continued my swimming career after college was when I moved to Tucson. After Matt Grievers moved to Tucson, I went to visit him for his birthday. And I went out there and I trained for a week or two. And I was like, swimming outside in the sun? <laughs> uh, what? Okay, no so sold. No, <laughs> no six-month winter in Evanston. So, um and, and ever since then, I just get such joy from swimming outside in the sun that, you know, I, it's, just, it's just something that's, that's part of me. If, if I don't do it, then, then something's off. Then I'm like, wait, what? Who am I? What's my sure. identity again? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, in terms of answer your question for breaking uh, Masters of World Records, if, if that's in the cards, if, if I put enough uh, work in, I'm sure, you know, that could be, you know, in the, in the cards down the road. Hopefully this quarantine is, is over and, and we can get back to, to actually go into these, these competitions. I, I, I feel like maybe you gave away afterlife uh, all right there because it's, um, it, sound, it, sounds like the, it sounds like the thing that, that you should take away from swim and sometimes it takes years for it to happen is that when you're in that space or when you're in, the, in that medium, um, it's not about what the color of your medal is or what team you're on. It's about that, that feeling and that joy because it does change your brain chemistry. The, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask about the film in terms of where we're at. So we, we're, we're, you're into the festival. Uh, I, I know it, you, you're, you're trying to be shown at festivals and that, that helps. The, it's good for the resume. It's good for the film. But you know, at what point will this drop and be available to everybody? 
You know, that's hard to say. Um, we'd love to distribute the project, um, but for the time being, we're just in the process of screening it at the festivals we've been selected by, and we're really, really excited to be a part of them. It means a lot because, you know, this was a, a passion project, like I said, a, a labor of love, and it just kind of snowballed into this thing. Um, and we're really excited to share it. I feel like I spent so much time just in post-production um, with this feeling in my gut like I needed to relay this information because someone somewhere, athlete or not, would benefit from hearing this story. And um, I think that's one of the reasons I'm really proud of Mike is because he put something positive out into the, the world. Uh, you don't have to answer this question, but I'm curious. What'd you shoot on? Oh, um, Sony FS7, um, A7S Mark II, and an FS5 for some high-speed photography. Nice, impressive. We have, we have a lot. We have a lot of budding filmmakers who are actively participating in the sport. Some of them are super young. Some are. They, they will appreciate hearing that. And I'll actually ask, I'll ask you to follow up with an email and, and share that with me. So sure. I tried to write it down as fast as I could. I really like the Sony image and we actually married it with these vintage Cook Pancros. Um, so it gives it this kind of like creamy roll off. And it's a really nice combination. Um, in terms of the uh, having a crew follow you around, having people in the, in the background, Mike, is it... Uh, or I, I know you, you're, 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 you're comfortable with media. You're comfortable with yourself. Um, but th you, there was, uh, that's a long time to be together to capture film, to curate down to 12 minutes. What's, uh, yeah. what was that experience like for you? Yeah. Um, I've never been camera shy. Um, let's just put it that way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, for me, um, especially, you know, going through, you know, being fortunate from a young age to be, you know, representing Bulgaria, going to European championships where the camera's in your face, you know, going through these competitions from, you know, a, a young age, you know, 16 years old, 15, 16, and being in front of that large audience, having the camera there, just uh, that became, you know, I, I couldn't get sidetracked. I remember my first competitions, it was like easy to get sidetracked. You almost want to perform in front of the camera instead of, you know, stay focused for your race. And uh, I had to quickly learn that, that that needs to be, you need to stay focused. You know, you're not here, you're here performing for, you know, your competition, yeah. not, uh, not, not, not the Eurosport or, uh, you know, ESPN, things like that. So um, for me, that was, that was kind of easy, you know, especially when we, you know, years ago we got together at that point I was, you know, 30 some. So um, I was, I was just doing my thing and, uh, just that was an honest portrayal of, and you'll, as you'll see, you'll see it at, at competitions. You know, this is not mock. These aren't mock. You know, it was at practice at, at these competitions that you'll see some of the footage in. Um, there's no acting. There's zero acting. Yeah. It was brutally honest at times. And again, that's something I just really, really respected um, about Mike was, he brought it not in the sense of like being big, but actually being small. And that's actually what's really, really important. I feel like to filmmaking is being honest and he let us in and we had to kind of earn his trust. I feel like, and um, eventually I felt like just kind of a fly on the wall and um, Mike was just Mike without any affectations or, or anything, you know, it was really special. It's great to have your, it's great to have this capture and, and, and to memorialize you, Mike, in 12 minutes. And, uh, and, and now we, we know it was shot on, so we know it's beautiful. However, it doesn't, 12 minutes isn't, isn't, isn't really your life. You know, there, there, there are certain things that are, that, that, that will define you. So when you're an old man and you're, and you're dying, and it's about to be over. You're going to have that thumbnail memory from your competitive career. Maybe you won, maybe you lost. 
it's, it, but it defines you and it, def- and it sort of encapsulate, encapsulates who you are. What is that moment for you? The one that's I mean, still- it's it- really <laughs> special. It's really special. It's really special. It's hard for me to put it into words. Um, I've tried to express my gratitude to Ryan and Alex. Um, I've tried to express it verbally. Um, and it's, it's something that is just so special for them to go out of their way, out of their jobs out of their life to use their own talents to try to, you know, find it, that special part of my life and try to portray it and, and see it just, just not even just making it, but just being able to, to realize that there's something special here that is special for my life, but also that is the story that, that people can benefit from. That is enough for me. I am just forever grateful just for that. And the rest is history. The rest, you know, I think, <clears throat> Like we said earlier, um, people can b- benefit from yeah. definitely, and uh, but that aside, for me personally, my family, and my dad, the way that it enca- encapsulates our friendship, our relationship, uh, his fatherhood, his leadership, um, is is so special, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll forever have that, and. Uh, massive gratitude inexplainable for me so that means so much to me i appreciate it but i feel like we got as much value as um, mike did in the process it was it was like church for a filmmaker you know it was just like raw and authentic and it was really beautiful that way so it was a great experience it's uh I can't wait to see it now, but I do want to come back to my question. You're an old man (laughs) and you have the thumbnail in your head of that one race, that one competitive moment, and it encapsulates who you are. What's your takeaway? What is that moment? Like I have, I have a Uh a moment when I was a child and a moment when I was in high school is a moment as an elite. What, what, What is it for you? That moment is what you said from the beginning. Senior year, 2007. I knew you were going to say 2007. 100 yeah. breaststroke, NCAA final. That is the moment. Yeah. That's that was the that was the breakthrough moment for me, and uh, that was the start of something more after that. But that was the moment. I mean, uh, I did it. I'll never forget that moment. <laughs> I when did I, it. When I, <laughs> I did it. When I, I looked at that time, I took my goggles off to make sure I wasn't seeing things and you know I, I yelled I did it you know because <laughs> my dad and I were always talking about you know doing things and, and that was and the whole, the whole team also I mean that was the time that I had people tell me well I don't know about this year maybe next year you know you're going pretty fast now you know I had I had my doubters and I had my you know also the people that said you're gonna do it you're gonna do it and then it was I did it and that was it. That was the moment. Honestly, that would be my thumbnail too. Like I remember the moment, the first time I watched that archival footage that his father Plamen sent over to myself and Alex, I was just blown away. Like it just radiated with that energy mm-hmm. of exactly what he's describing. And I felt it as a, just a viewer at that time. Um, so I'm really excited to share that moment in particular. The film is Afterlife, director Ryan Rundle, and our subject, Michael Alexandrov. If you don't know him, you to know him is to love him. Guys, will you keep me posted and let me know when this is, is available for wide distribution so we can all, all watch it? Sure. And if you'd like to check it out, um, it'll be streaming online at the Hot Springs Documentary Film Festival, October 9th through the 17th. Thank you. We'll share that URL within the post when we are live. Thank you, guys. Any Thanks parting you, thoughts? Any parting thoughts? Um, any parting thoughts? Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate Ryan. This is going to be something that I think everyone's going to enjoy. Everyone can relate to. And um, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mel. We really appreciate you taking the time with us. Cut it there. Uh, cut it there Coleman thank you guys very much uh, and we'll try to get this turned around quickly I appreciate it 
Uh, can you send me an email just like with the hot springs and, uh, you know, when, when it's streaming, do you mind sending me that? Like, Not at all. Do the camera I can, send you, a, I can yeah. send you a link to the media kit too. If there's any like one sheets, production stills, a trailer that you want to use, um, you're welcome to it. Okay. So it's, it's, I have that, but does like, you know, do, 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 do you share like what you captured on and is that all there? Oh, the camera and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you those details too. I love that you're a, a film nerd like me. It's not that. It's, <laughs> it's not that. Our audience is. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, our audience Even is. Better. We, we, we've learned to share. People request it so often, we're like, crap. And then we put it in. So it's, uh, it's okay. something that's meaningful. And uh, we like to make everybody happy. And it might just be that, hey, you know, I'm, you're going to find people that love swim, but also love filmmaking. And they're going to they're gonna want to drop in. And this is going to be amazing. cool. Anyway, so camera body and then um, film festival dates and URL. That's it. Okay, gotcha. Do uh, as while you're on camera. Do we have the we do? Will you can swim swim use this media to report? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. All right, guys. You guys have a great day. Thank you for doing this and sitting around and showing up so early. Thank in the Mel. Morning. Yeah. Thank you, Mel. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.